What's going on, everyone? It's Rich Haywood here from Bacon Ice Cream Productions and Team RTFC. There's been some retro news. One, two, three pages of it. And you know what that means. That means it's time for the Good Times Newsline. So welcome back, everyone. So the Newsline, eh, some of this stuff is stuff you might have heard in other places. Some of it's stuff you might have heard, you know, just in general or whatever. But I think it's cool nonetheless that we go over it and put it all into this one big mix of a show in case you haven't gone to all the other outlets and got the tidbits from everywhere. So let's begin with the Amico News Roundup. So not a whole lot going on in the in television Amico news lately. The team over at Team and Television has been really hard at work putting together all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, trying to get that, that component stuff fixed up so they can start putting these things together and start putting them on shelves in October, right? So, you know, obviously there might not be a big push until another couple months goes by and they start getting ready to actually launch this thing. And then we'll get the, you know, the second wave of deluge of news. And then at that point, I think actually the news line might like happen a little sooner than, uh, than it has been. But for now, there's been some cool stuff like Amazon.de, right? Germany, right? That's cool. What's on Amazon.de in television accessories? That's right. I don't know how long they've been up there, but someone wound up finding them and everyone started talking about them. So I figured, well, let's put in the Good Times Newsline, two cents on those accessories. And what do they have? Well, they got console carry bags, console carry sleeves, co controller overlays, which are like little stickers you put on top of the controller, and controller buttons. So starting with the carry bag, I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, this, this is one of those things designed to like, hey, maybe you take it with you to go to like show friends or you know, go to a con and, you know, like you're hanging out, you know, find a random television, start hooking it up and playing Amico. Um, it's a good thing about Amico too, because, you know, once you're, you know, once you've got everything and you've, you know, registered that you've like, oh, I've done my purchase and stuff, it is kind of like movable. So you don't have to worry about, oh, do I have to have an internet connection? I have to dial in in order to play my game and like that kind of stuff. No, you just pop it in and play, which is awesome. So you got the controller carry sleeves, those are the things, you know, you, so if you've got the, the console going into a bag, you're going to have to have the controllers want to put them in something because it does have a touch screen. So you don't want to get them scratched up. You put it in a little sleeve. It's kind of cool. And the controller overlays seem to be the, the popular item because, you know, like what, what else is, you know, like what's not as popular as, you know, customizing the things that you own, right? So... The controller overlays, they come in all sorts of different stuff. There's ones for sports, there's ones for sci-fi, there's like a military one, there's like, um, there's one for like girls specifically, I think. There's, I think they're missing one. It might be up there. But there's all sorts of cool stuff and it's pretty neat. You know, the, the designs um, of all the stuff are uh, placeholder so we don't know exactly if it's going to be final or if it's actually going to look like that when it comes out. Probably some might be very similar and some might not. But either way, it's kind of cool to look at. So what do you guys think? Hit me up in the comments below and see, you know, like, hey, what do you think about the, all the interesting accessory things? And if there's an accessory that you want to see, like, listed on the, you know, maybe not just Amazon.de, but everywhere, you know, Hit me up and say, like, hey, you know what? This accessory would be kind of cool. For me, I don't know. I mean, just kind of want the console in my hand to start playing these games already. Um, so moving on, there were some interesting ideas. So not necessarily a news item, but just something that hit on that was really cool and it's very near and dear to, to my heart. And that came from the Amico After Dark podcast that just happened, I think, yesterday, actually. So those guys right over there. So listening to the very beginning of the episode, RAB, or Retro Advisory Board, he was talking about a pretty cool idea. That idea was to introduce kids to the Amico via the way of game development. So what does that mean? 
It means, you know, kind of just like in the process of getting kids to learn about making games and marketing and launching and basically the whole game development system in a nutshell, kind of, kind of putting Amico in there because it's kind of a cool way of, you know, seeing like, oh, well, here's this like whole like little microcosm of an ecosystem right there. And not only that, but there could be opportunities for these small game developers to people that are just coming out of schools and stuff like that to submit their ideas directly to Intellivision, maybe in a contest or like a, you know, like a, a, um, like a talent kind of scouting kind of thing, you know, get their idea involved with them and then wind up having their game not only made but published and put on the store. That'd be kind of cool. And the way that in t Team Intellivision's game curation is going to be, they're going to be putting out the games not like 27 every day, right? It'll be one or two, like a week or two weeks or whatever they decide that is going to be the, you know, the good tranching out of the games. So every game gets a chance to breathe. And if one of those games happens to be from a smaller developer, as in like a student from high school or college, I mean, that's actually cool because not only is it great to put on a resume as the student, but you know, we get to play cool, unique games that you know, no one might have thought of yet because maybe you know, whoever it was just had a really cool idea. So um, you know, it's an opportunity at least for, for them to, to think about over a team in television. And on top of it all, I, I'm pretty sure that those ideas might already be um, either in the works or at least on the drawing board for them too. So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty much it for uh, Amico News. And it's nothing really, like, like I said before, nothing really like hard hitting there, but you know, hey, tomorrow's another day. And you know, we've known what happens you know, in team and television. So it goes quiet for like two, three, four weeks, and all of a sudden there's like two weeks straight of just drops almost every day. So, you know, hey, I'm ready for the wave. So <laughs> anyway, let's move on to Evercade Corner. So, well, when last we let, left the Good Times Newsline, we were talking about this guy right here. That's the Evercade VS, and it was coming soon, right? Well, not anymore. It is totally a thing. There it is. It's the Evercade VS. The announcement was really awesome. We chatted about it on the Evercast, and it's going to be able to be pre-ordered as of May 28th. So get your pre-order fingers ready. You're going to be able to pre-order this thing. Um, and here's some details about it. So it's a home console, as pictured here. It's got four controller inputs, which is pretty awesome. It's got two, not one, but two card slots for convenience factor. So the way that the UI is going to be uh, set up, if you put a cartridge in, it loads all the games in that cart. You put the second cartridge in, it mixes the games, it like puts it in, in, you know, in order, and the UI will show you games from both cartridges. So you can flip-flop and swap between, you know, say, an Atari cart and you know, maybe the Intellivision cart that comes out later, right? Or the you know, Data East cart and the Technos cart or something like that. So you can actually not have to get up and then keep changing out the cartridges all the time. Or leave one of your favorites in that like, never leaves, like maybe the Atari Collection 1 cart for me or the Pico Collection 1 cart, which is an amazing, amazing cartridge. Um, you leave it in there and then you know, just they have your, your hot swap cart cart slot for, you know, trying out or, you know, like you're at a party and you want, you know, friends to come over and they don't, they don't want to play Pico for the 20 millionth time or whatever, you know, you slot another card in and then, you know, it's just there for convenience, which is cool. It's got 1080p output instead of the 720p that the handheld puts out, which is a nice little upgrade. And it's got a full size HDMI connection, um, which is awesome because, you know, you not have to worry about, oh, well, I have to get another mini HDMI cable to hook up to the VS because you know they use the same interface as the handheld. I am very happy about that because well, full HDMI is awesome because you're gonna have cables laid, laid around everywhere. You know you probably have 12 for, you know in your living room somewhere. Um, so you just you know you can use those at any time. So if one goes bad, you're gonna have to order another one or something like that. Price is pretty awesome. It's $99 US um, for the intro, the base, uh, the base. VS unit that comes with one console, one controller, and one game. So 
We don't know anything else about the other editions. We do know that two other editions do exist. There is like a deluxe or like multiplayer uh, version, which will have the Evercade console, two controllers, and two games, which is pretty cool. So that's gonna be at an unknown price. And then a limited edition color that will have like a maybe, like a, maybe something else that comes with it, similar maybe to the, maybe the all-in bundle that uh, Funstock had for the Evercade when it came out. We got like all 10 cartridges and the Evercade and a case and a little like coin and something like that. And they bundled it in all in one in bundle price. Maybe, they're, maybe there's gonna be something similar for the VS, who knows. Um, but, you know, and it's looking at launch um, that's gonna be like later on in the year. You know, so like that October, November timeframe. So we don't have an official release date yet, but it is coming and it is announced. So there were some cool things though in the trailer that landed to all sorts of crazy speculation and confirmation by Blaze. The first thing was there was likely in that trailer going to be an announcement very soon of an arcade collection that has been confirmed that not only yes, the announcement is going to come soon, but uh, yes, it is also that purplish card that you see here in that trailer thing. It was an arcade collection. What collection is it? Who knows? But even more still, the sleuth known as OEBP was on the mission, and he looked at the trailer and then found that there was a screenshot of a game, which we have in the Technos collection, but it didn't look like this in the Technos collection, because this is Double Dragon Arcade, where the Double Dragon that we got on the Technos collection was the NES version. So <clears throat> that could be maybe possible Technos arcade card. Hey, I'll take that. And there's been some other things that might have been hinted at. Now, um, when we had uh, Sean Cleaver on the Evercast and something we're about to talk about, he also had something in the background of his, um, of his room. Now again, all proved by Blaze, he is a Blaze employee himself, and he is the resident hype man of Blaze, did have a sign that said something to the effect of uh, bad dudes and VS. So you know, why, reference, um, you know, why reference that? Car, you know, that specific game, which is on another cartridge, but why just bring that up? Maybe it's a favorite game, or maybe it's tied to something else that is going to be in another collection that that might turn into an arcade collection. So you know, we could see like all sorts of different cool things coming soon. What we did hear though, was all of the cartridges that is going to be for the rest of the year, um, or at least in this timeline, which is right over here, we'll talk about that in a little bit too, all those ha will be announced pr prior to the May 28th pre-order date. So we're gonna know stuff and we're gonna know stuff pretty soon. So the next news line, I don't know, I'm gonna try to hold off and uh, see if we can get those announcements in between the next time I shoot a news line and, and now. Uh, so hopefully the next time we hear about this, we'll be talking about all the new collections that are gonna be announced. <clears throat> which is pretty cool. So overall, everything looks awesome. The VS is cool. I'm psyched about it, totally getting one. And we'll see what happens on the 28th. And I'll have those pre-order fingers ready, see if I can get one of those limited edition color things, if it looks cool. So speaking of May 28th, we're gonna slip on, before we get into some more really cool news, we're gonna slip on some not so great news, I guess. Well, because with the good comes some of the bad. On May 28th was going to be the release date for Worms and Indie Heroes. Now, unfortunately, because everything was going on and chip shortages and all this kind of stuff, that release date got pushed to July 30th, 2021. It's kind of a bummer, but the stuff is happening everywhere. I mean, look, you know, can you go and get a PS5 right now or an Xbox Series X, just walk into a store and buy one? No, it's not happening. Yeah, I know that they're also like in huge demand and all that kind of stuff, but they can't even get their parts to put this stuff together either. So. You know, everybody's having problems. In the industry I work in, trying to get orders in for the summer, um, the summer, uh, the summer ordering, man, I'm like scraping the bottom of the barrel trying to find parts to, you know, supply supply things here where, where I work, which is, uh, it's uh, 
it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> but this thing's happening everywhere, but it's not that bad because you know, we've got so many games to still talk about on the Evercast and so many games to revisit and replay. So, okay, we gotta wait another two months uh, to get our games. It's not a big deal, but still it's part of the news. So the next thing though was the Intellivision collection has finally had all of its games revealed, which was pretty cool. We did that on the Evercast with uh, Sean Cleaver in, the, in the, the panel itself, and that was a really cool thing. It was a really cool moment to be able to say, hey, you know, here's this thing that OEB Pete helped bring along, and it was a nice little hat tip for Blaze to kind of give Pete the ability to just be like, oh, hey, well, let's reveal all of the, um, all of the, the, the other games, and it was really cool to be on the panel and see that. So, what's the list? Well, of course we know Astro Smash, Frogbog, and Night Stalker, those were the three that we knew about. But then we add Buzz Bombers, we add Pinball, which is really cool because I love me some video pinball on the Atari, so the Intellivision pinball game, definitely psyched about that. Princess Quest, which is actually awesomeness because it's a homebrew game, and that gives me hope that we might be able to see some of the other um, Electro Knight games or we can see like maybe some of the other uh, cool homebrew stuff that's going on around there. Maybe in Televania, that'd be really awesome. So um, that just like, that, that lends to the, that whole thing that Blaze does awesome curation and always kind of like slides in things that are just a little bit unexpected, which is really, really cool. So moving on, we got Shark Shark. We got Super, uh, sorry, Slapshot Super Pro Hockey. We got Snafu, we got Thin Ice, which is an awesome hat tip to Keith Robinson, who came up with the design idea for that game. Now Keith, he was the former president of Intellivision Productions, and was a real steward for the Intellivision brand, and there's probably not a bigger fan that was, you know, was around, around the time that Keith was still with us, um, who was a bigger fan of Intellivision. I mean, maybe Tommy, but I, don't, I wouldn't even think so. Like, Keith was just like, the guy, you thought in television, and then you saw him because he was right there to just kind of champion that brand. And I think it's really awesome that they uh, made sure that, that that game was on the cart because it's, you know, like I said, it's a really nice hat tip to him. So then we got Thundercastle, which is yes, love Thundercastle. It's a really cool game. I want it in my collection so bad, but well, the wait won't be as long because you know, and I know by the end of the year, I'm going to have Thundercastle at least one way to be able to play it on the Evercade and my VS. I mean, hey, well, I'll, that'll be good enough for me until I can get my card in my hand. Um, so that's cool. And then Word Rockets, which is a game that was on two different cartridges on the Intellivision. It was on Learning Fun 2, which is a super rare game. So that's another great thing from Blaze, getting these games that were existing on other cartridges and those cartridges are like obscenely expensive in the collector's market, but now you can get them and in these collections, you know, like 15, 20 bucks, whatever. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome to be able to like, you know, get these games and be able to play them um, and they're licensed, right? And it's, also, it's really, really cool. But that game was also on Word Fun, which is still kind of hard to find. Um, but so Learning Fun 2 and Word Fun, the Word Rockets game uh, appeared in, but it's really cool to be able to see that game represented um, on the collection, which is neat. So um, Blaze, speaking of the Intellivision, you start thinking about, all right, well, it's an Intellivision collection. How is the controllers working? Well, they are working to make sure that mapping is done in an easy, in, in an easy to understand way. And it's gonna be great when, if they lock this all in to be able to play these games on the go, be able to play it on the VS, and then you know, be able to just play them on the standard controller uh, setup too, because you know, that will introduce more Intellivision into many more hands. And then maybe they'll start, you know, those, these players that, that see these games will start thinking, oh, Intellivision, maybe I'll check that out. You know, go to a retro store and try to dig one out and get some stuff and then, you know, be introduced to the controller and then see the cool overlays and then like, well, you know, then turn it into me and I have 10 million cartridges all over my house. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, um, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. And then for me also, like as a super plus, to be able to you know, have these in television games put into something that's really easy to use and has an HDMI out, that means I can capture HD footage from in television games. Oh, 
I'm so, so psyched about that, um, which is really cool because I've been really meaning to uh, do some more in television games on the channel because I really like it, but it's so hard. It's so hard to capture. Um, but another friend of mine, uh, DJC Game Studios, might have actually given me an, an inadvertent idea on how to do in television capture, but more on that, uh, that's, another, that's definitely another show. So, um, speaking of the VS and the multiplayer capability, I'm wondering how many of the games are actually going to be um, enabled to utilize those multiplayer features on the VS. So hopefully, you know, like of course, like you know, Slapshot. Of course, you get, you know, you want to do that. I mean, Frogbog basically is a two-player game, so you're going to want to do the uh, the multiplayer features there. So, you know, hopefully, um, we'll be able to see we'll be able to see that on on many of these games. You know, like Shark Shark and um, Snafu, of course, and you know, and and any any others that have the multiplayer uh, aspects in them. So really hoping to see all that kind of stuff come through. So we're not done with Evercade news yet because Blaze has taken the news tsunami and has washed us with all of this news. So Bitmap Brothers collection, that has now been announced. So the timeline right here is getting filled in a little more. See, there's Bitmap Brothers, and so now there's four carts and the end of the year. So like now we can let the real speculation to begin as to what the four cards are going to be. So that's pretty cool. So getting back to Bitmap Brothers, <clears throat> what's in the collection? Well, there's going to be five games this time for the Bitmap Brothers collection. That's the Chaos Engine, which was an NES title, or SNES title, I should say, sorry. Um, Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe, which was a Mega Drive Genesis title. Speedball 2100, which is another PlayStation title. So we're racking up the PlayStation games in these collections. And Xenon 2, uh, Mega Blast, the Mega Drive, and that was on Zenit Xenon 2 Mega Blast was on Mega Drive and Genesis. But that leaves out one because I just did four. Well, Speedball, the original, was a Sega Master System title. Yeah. Now, you know, on this channel, we love us some Sega Master System, and that's awesome news to hear that we're going to get some Sega Master System glory on the Evercade. Now, please, 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 if you guys are listening, if you could start including more of those Sega Master System fine, fine games on these collections, whew, make Rich a very happy man. Um, I'm, so, I'm so excited to see that that is actually going to be in the mix. I'm totally getting this cartridge, and I want to explore all these games because most of these games actually never even gotten a chance to play. Um, so, and that's another great thing about the Evercade, it's that exploration factor. It's, you know, give me more stuff to, uh, to explore. Really, really cool, really cool. There is actually an, a hidden in television connection here too. So, Mike Montgomery, he's of Stainless Games. Well, Stainless Games and Bitmap Brothers, you don't see like, oh, what is that, what is, the, what is the connection? I'm losing it. Well, he was a founding member of the Bitmap Brothers and his team at Stainless, Stainless Games is working on Liar's Dice for the Intellivision Amica. So that's pretty cool. There's your, there's your connection right there. So that's, that's kind of neat. You know, how like, you know, Blaze and Intellivision completely unintentional, I'm sure, like are, are like kind of like working almost in tandem with the, some of the same development teams, which is cool and in different ways. So that, oh, <laughs> is finally, the end of the, um, of the Evercade Corner. Now, don't get me wrong. I love me some deluge of news, but that was, that was like a lot. That was a, that, was a, that was a full page of just Evercade news. I mean, just kidding. Keep it coming, please. But um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on to Zero Infinite Games. We're going to check in with them. Now, why did I say Zero Infinite Games and not just Into the Eternal? Well. Zero Infinite started working on another game, which is pretty cool. It's called Time Blazer. Now, what is this game? So it's kind of a mix of like a Defender-ish, R-type-ish ship in the setting of like an Asteroids game. So it's kind of cool. It's like a, and it's like in an arena. So you fly around this arena and you're shooting down all the asteroids and then you're doing these pickups so you can get like more powerful weapons and then be able to shoot the asteroids even faster. And then there's like this weird time element where you can like use different power-ups to slow down time and then get a huge score. 
Um, it looks pretty cool to me. Uh, apparently, the game's gonna have like several, like tens, tens and tens, maybe even hundreds of levels. So, they're, and they're working on it right now. And the best part is, it's also in open beta. So you wanna check this thing out, like today on your PC? Well, hit down below in the description and show links. Link's gonna be right there. Hit the link, download it, and you know, check it out. I've linked the video um, on YouTube. So you know, go and watch the video that you're seeing, like, you know, watch the whole thing. But I wanna make sure that people are going to the channel and like seeing um, what Zero Infinite is, is, uh, is doing on there. Uh, because like all the updates and stuff like that will be coming there. So make sure you hit up their channel and then click the link from there. Um, because I just want, you know, just want people to go and check them out because it's really cool. And man, Into the Eternal, although like we haven't had a lot of news about it lately, it's such a cool thing and I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. So we're gonna be checking in on Time Blazer and Into the Eternal as we get more information. So, but from, what I've played of the beta of Time Blazer, it's definitely worth a look because it, it got that like, ooh, I'm not doing so well, but I wanna play again so I can get even better like moment for me. And if you do that with me on a game, that means you've hooked me and I'm totally getting this as soon as this comes out. So, and, it's, and again, what about Into the Eternal? Well, like I said, it's still being worked on and it's still on Indiegogo. So you can go ahead and check the link in the show notes too and you know, check out its progress, and you know, if, you, if you missed out on the Kickstarter and you wanna back it, go ahead and back it. If you do back it, um, you can send a message to Zero Infinite, um, and they will most likely send you a Steam key for the, the, uh, the early access. So you know, back the game and get to play that, and you'll be playing some inter Into the Eternal with me too, uh, which is pretty awesome. So like I said, no new data on the game itself, um, as far as news goes, but we will be there right there for you uh, to bring more info as soon as we know. So let's move on to the Pie Packer. Because why not? Let's check in. So we all know what it is, right? It's an online service that has all these cool games. You can play multiplayer with your friends and has this Pi Reader adapter that you can hook into your computer where you can play cartridges that you own with your friends multiplayer online. It's a totally cool, cool, cool concept. And you know who thinks so? A whole bunch of people on Kickstarter. Why? Because those goals got smashed to pieces. It's at $150,000 of its original goal, I think of like, I think it was like 30,000 or something like that. I'll, I'll be told wrong if it's, if it's up there, but, but it, was, it was low. It was under 100,000 for the goal for sure. But it's way over 150, um, it was just over 150,000, like I should say now. And, um, and that's out of the time of this recording. And they've unlocked the following stretch goals too. Local multiplayer mode, which is cool. So I guess you'll be able to like bring up a private browser and then be able to do that like while you're in the house or do like a Chromecast thing or something like that. I don't know exactly how that's gonna work, but that's awesome. Um, bring your own GBA and Game Boy ROMs, which is also kind of cool. So if you've got uh, stuff you've downloaded through like, I don't know, Google, Google Games or something like that, if you have like some ROMs that you've downloaded from um, you know, those other stores, you'll be able to bring those into Packer and play them, which is really cool. Twitch integration, um, which is also really cool because then now if you want to get into a multiplayer session and then stream it, now you can just boom, hit the, hit the Twitch link, go on your Twitch channel and then you know, play away, which is really, really cool. Gives me some cool ideas. Um, then competition and leaderboards is also unlocked. So we're definitely getting that, which is really cool because that means you know, if they're responding back to the community, having like cool competitions, maybe have some prizes and stuff. And of course, you know, you got the, the online leaderboards for bragging rights. I mean, that brings people that might be competitive with retro games into the scene and want to check it out. So, you know, something that all of these things should, should be considering. Blaze should be considering that when the VS comes out um, because it has Wi-Fi ability and a, a uh, feature that I forgot to say in the, in the VS, <laughs> the VS roundup. Um, and, um, not only that, you know, that, that lends to like, oh, hey, maybe they can do an online leaderboard and have like scores go up and down. 
Of course, the Amico um, also has online, online capabilities to download games from the store, uh, but they're also talking about online leaderboards and like, you know, kind of like uh, certificate things, kind of like patches where you get a certain score that's time bound or region bound, and then you'd be able to get a PDF certificate you print out and like that kind of thing. So, you know, it's a big deal. People like to have that. And then having that feature now unlocked inside of the, the, uh, the Kickstarter stretch goal is good stuff. And they're moving fast to the $170,000 goal, um, which is a GBA and GB Pi Reader adapter itself. So, you know, where you have the Super Nintendo one, the Nintendo one, and the uh, Genesis one, there'll be another adapter, another reader that they'll wind up putting out for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, which is really cool. Now, putting it out there, I know it's not as popular, but you're gonna keep making adapters, guys. Um, dip into the second generation, because that would be kind of cool. Atari 2600, 7800, uh, Intellivision, ColecoVision, you know, Sega Master System, unless you can use the adapter. You know, if you can, if you can do the uh, power base converter on the Pi Reader, then they, of course that, that solves that problem. Maybe even Game Gear adapter, why not, right? You know, just go nuts. So anyway, you can, you know, when they hit um, 170,000, that, that'll be unlocked as an option. I guess you can buy um, as the, uh, you know, you can get that GBA, GB adapter as a, as a side thing. Um, and then uh, that's, pretty good. that's pretty much that. I mean, it's looking great for them and for every backer because that means they're just getting more stuff for the, you know, the, the whatever level that they backed. And, um, you know, that's, that's really, really neat. So <clears throat> if you guys want to check it out, Kickstarter is still live. Links will be down below in the description. Um, so, you know, hop on in. And that will move us to the final topic round, which is Atari VCS news. So there's even more games coming, which is awesome. So we've got the Kickstarter. I got a Kickstarter update for Unsung Warriors. That has fully been funded, which is awesome. It's at $25,000. And its original goal, I think, was in the this 15 or 13 range. So it's a near doubling of the, uh, the, the goal. And they're working on their uh, Kickstarter stretch goals. They've got unlocked an arena mode, um, which will be able to like, do like a boss rush kind of thing. And an extra playable character um, as uh, unlocked stretch goals. So there'll be an extra playable character and the boss rush mode already added in. And they're looking at seeing to get to that 30,000 US mark um, where they're gonna try to add animated cutscenes. Now there's a whole bunch of other ones that they haven't actually released yet as far as stretch goals go, but um, that's looking pretty cool. And of course, as for un Unsung Warriors and people with the VS, if you haven't already and you've got a VS, or a VCS, I should say, man, that's gonna get really confusing, VCS, VS. But if you've got an Atari VCS, and you haven't gone to the store and downloaded Unsung Warriors Prologue, give it a whirl, it's pretty fun. Um, so definitely check it out. And I think I might actually do a video um, checking it out, like, you know, like either live or um, you know, live to tape anyway, and then you know, put out a video just to give you kind of some more impressions about that. So very cool. So we had another game called D-Generation, but not D-Generation X. No, <laughs> just D-Generation. Um, it's a 30-year-old game that's you know, gonna be celebrating its 30th anniversary by putting out another version on the Atari VCS, which is kind of cool. So um, I think that D-Generation was like one of those Atari ST, Atari 800 titles. Again, the screen might be yelling at me and telling me I'm wrong or whatever, but I think that's what it was. Um, so in the description, of the uh, of the like the press release or whatever that I was reading, Degeneration is a cyberpunk action adventure game loaded with puzzle elements you need to solve in order to progress. It's one of those games that generates hours of fun as you dodge robot sentries and laser defenses while you carefully explore your surroundings, looking for clues to solve intricate puzzles and progress to the next challenge. I mean, looks cool to me, and you know from what I'm seeing here. I mean, might, might be cool for you guys. I'm always into that kind of like, you know, like a cyberpunky, like futuristic kind of thing. That's definitely my jam. I love sci-fi. I love all that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely gonna be checking this out. 
and it should be coming soon to a VCS near you. So I don't know anything about pre-orders or um, price or anything like that, but you know, most of these games that are coming out on the VCS tend to be within that like, you know, like nine to 25-ish, maybe 30-ish bucks price point level. So, um, you know, definitely within the realm of, of possibility there for the price for degeneration. So hopefully we'll see that soon and we'll be bringing you some footage. So let's go to Indiegogo, where on Indiegogo, we've got Red Rust, which is by indie developer Art Source Digital. And of course, it's coming to the Atari VCS. They describe it as Final Fight meets Contra. Like, come on. That's pretty awesome, right? Um, they also describe it as big and loud Soviet-themed arcade game with robots and a metal soundtrack. Also, like, this is kind of, kind of getting, like, cool. Like, you got this, like, you know, like, grungy, like, wartime kind of era, you know, thing where, you know, you got this, like, like super, like, punk metal character running around, like, beating up bad guys and, like, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. It definitely looks kind of cool. Um, do you want to play it right now on PC? Right, yes, you do, right? Well, go ahead down below and hit up the link. I've got a link to the um, ArtSource Digital page where they've got the beta, and you can get it right now. Get it, play it, if you like it, have a VCS, or if you like it and you have Steam, because I think that's coming there too, go on up, hit the Indiegogo link, boom, check it out. So right now, as far as its like levels and stuff, it's at 3,700 of its $1,500 goal. So it's still got a ways to go, but it's got time to spare. So I mean, it's got like 18 or 20 days or something like that. So check that out too. And if you want to back it, the link's down below as well. That's pretty awesome, right? So with all of that, we've got great games coming or great looking games coming anyway to the VCS, even more news since the last time we did one, we were talking about the Unsung Warriors, but then two other games that were coming, and now we have another news line, we have two more games. Hey, if we can, if we can keep this going, the next news line we, we, uh, we talk about, we're talking about the finalization of Unsung Warriors and you know, how things are going with Red Rust, and then you have another game announcement, that's what I'm talking about. Get some, get some games on this system and get us playing, which is really, really cool. And with that, I am out of news. That was a fully loaded Good Times news line. And I want to thank you so, so much for sticking with me and checking this out. I also want to say that it's that time of the show, of every show, that we say, hey, you like what I do? Well, I got a whole bunch of friends that do similar things. And they talk about all sorts of cool retro stuff. And you know, sometimes they talk modern gaming stuff. Sometimes they talk, you know, all the things that I talk about, you know, Amico, Evercade, Atari VCS, all that kind of stuff. So check out these guys, you know, give them some love. And also want to want to spotlight this guy right here. That's Chris, the Atari creep. Now he um, does some awesome things on his channel, but on top of doing awesome things on the channel, he also does this, which is the walk to end Alzheimer's. He does a promotion every year just to honor, to, to honor people in his, in his family um, that have passed on of uh, that um, of that disease. <clears throat> and you know, I just want to say that he does like tremendous work, and I think he deserves all the support necessary. So down and below, there's some links in there. If you could just share out the link, got some extra bucks, you want to toss his way, hit the link, and then donate uh, to the cause. He has a $1,000 goal every year. He's smashed that already, which is awesome. It's amazing. But you know what? I want to take this and then take it to the next level. He usually runs this promotion all the way through October, and we're in May. So you know what that means. So just go in there and just start like taking out the hammer and just smashing goals all over the place for this guy. He just, like I said, he does awesome work. He's a really good friend. And um, you know, anything I can do to support him would be awesome. So uh, check that out. And Besides that, we can also check out some other friends. So if you're into the Evercade and you want to hear some more, and you want to hear some voices that 
you know, are coming from the other side of the pond, well, those guys are it. Um, all those guys are doing really awesome stuff. They run, uh, most of them are either in or help run the Evercades fans, fans group on Facebook. So check out that, there's links down below of every video I do uh, because I am one of those guys that is you know, helping things out on the Facebook side. Um, and I also um, sometimes go on the Evercade um, fans group official cast that's done by It's Much More. And it's pretty cool, it's a good stuff. Very cool things, talk about all things Evercade and talk about all things that are going on inside the group, uh, which is really cool. And that brings us, of course, to us here at Bacon Ice Cream, where we thank you again so much for hanging out with us and watching. And if you could, as we ask you to do for all of our friends, you just go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the way out. We would really, really appreciate that. Helps the channel grow, of course, and it helps us get to our 1,000 subscriber goal, which as soon as we reach, we can just blast off into awesomeness as we help out all these great causes that we've been finding around and will really enable the channel to reach more people and tell them about all these kind of cool stuff. So thanks again for watching. We will catch you next time for some good times. I'm Rich and we'll see you later. Take it easy guys.